everyone, it's Jay the Nerd here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to get all the nerdy content you ever need every Wednesday and Saturday. Now after a brief break from reviews last week, I'm finally back with my Attack on Titan reviews and I'm going to be talking about the last two episodes of the final season of Attack on Titan. And these last couple episodes uh, not much action, just a lot of exposition, which I don't mind after the crazy arc that we had before uh, fighting all of the Marlians. Um, and it was nice to kind of learn uh, what's been happening with the uh, Paradis Island crew the last uh, four years. We got a lot of flashbacks that let us know that um, the that Aaron and Levi and all of them have been taking out ships of Marlians that were being sent to Paradis to get back at them for have, taking the Colossal and founding Titan and female Titan and all that. So, um, they've been taking out ships uh, with the help of Aaron's Titan form and they have been asking some Marlians that came on the ships to side with them and help them. And luckily they found some that would and they were actually some people who were uh, an anti marlian force to help the Eldians. And so they have um, some island, some uh, outside world people on their side, which is always great and makes a lot of sense now uh, knowing how they were able to pull off some of the stuff that they do um, when they infiltrate Marley uh, four years later. So they also found out that Zeke is the one who was behind the planning of this anti-Marley uh, force. And so that's how we learn that Zeke has been on the Paradise Island crew's side or the Eldians' side for quite some time, which I never would have been able to peg that whatsoever because he was a pretty scary antagonist uh, in season two and three, and I never would have expected him to be on the Paradise Island side whatsoever. So knowing that he's been planning this for a long time is really interesting. But I mean, I guess it makes sense um, because he's Eldian and he would want to protect his own people. But at the same time, as a kid, he literally backstabbed his own father and his his father is the reason why all of this Paradise Island stuff is even happening. Why they were able to take the Attack Titan, the Founding Titan, um, the uh, Colossal Titan, the Female Titan, all it started with Aaron's dad. So it's really interesting that he changed his tune so much, but if you think about it, he was a kid when he betrayed his dad and people grow up and change. But it's just interesting to see someone who was so freaking scary and is responsible for so many people dying, including Erwin, that he would change his tune like that. But who knows, maybe he has changed his tune for a very long time and him attacking the Paradise Island crew was just part of his covert operation or whatever. Who knows? But anyways, Zeke is on our side now. Woo! And we got some anti-Marlian forces, some Marlian people on our side, which obviously helps. And it's very obvious when in the past few episodes, when we got the Aaron and the scouts infiltrating Marley, that the Marlians had no idea how much information the Paradise Island crew really knew. They knew a lot about their technology simply because they had some Marlians on their side and they probably never would have expected that. So that was a great way to surprise them. But anyways, I'm really enjoying these flashback episodes and getting to learn like how they p were able to pull off their infiltration of Marley so well and get the Warhammer Titan and almost get the Jaw Titan and everything. It's nice to know how that actually happened. <clears throat> but anyways, we get to meet this guy, this Marlian named Niccolo, who cooks a bunch of food and introduces them to seafood, which makes a lot of sense. They never would have had seafood because they didn't even know the ocean was a thing until recently. So that was really fun. And getting to... Uh, the best part about having these flashback episodes was that we got to see Sasha again because, as you know from my previous video, I was absolutely fucking heartbroken that she died. So it was really nice getting to see her again for flashback episodes. 
and we learned that Niccolo had a soft spot for Sasha after cooking her all that food for those couple of years. But we get some brave Marleyan, uh, anti-Marley forces volunteers, and um, that was pretty much the gist of that episode, except that um, another thing is that Aaron revealed, you know, way too freaking late, that he can actually use the Founding Titan powers if he touches someone of royal blood, a titan form of someone with royal blood. And he kept that a secret for like two freaking years for no freaking reason. Well, I guess to protect Historia is the reason why he did it because they didn't want to turn, didn't want them to turn Historia into a titan. But he finally reveals it and they're like, why the fuck didn't you tell us sooner? But anyways, so now that they know that, um, it's Zeke's plan to utilize that so then they never have to pass the Founding Titan down to someone with royalty because when it's passed down to someone, the Founding Titan is passed down to someone with royal blood, they are compelled to have the same mindset as the past people and to renounce war and erase people's memories and control everything and they obviously don't want that to happen anymore. So their workaround is what Aaron told them is to pass the Founding Titan down to someone who isn't royalty but pass uh, the Beast Titan down to someone of royalty and that they can touch each other and the Founding Titan power can be used. So that is basically the gist of that episode. Well, besides um, them mourning Sasha's death and having her funeral, which is really, really sad. <sighs> really, really sad. I miss Sasha. But we also had Armin's continuing... Armin and Mikasa's continuing um, conflict with Aaron and seeing that Aaron really has no morality anymore and doesn't give a shit about anyone as long as he gets his revenge against the Marleys. So Armin wishes that they could have peace, but no, that's probably not possible anymore since Aaron went and fucked everything up and they killed innocent people. And Aaron's like, well, you know what? They're right. The Eldians are monsters with titans. Why don't we just embrace it? And pff, any hope of Aaron having a rational moral brain anymore is just out the window. But then we have last week's episode, um, which is where we had um, another country come to them. And we find out that Mikasa, not the Ackerman side, but her mother's side, is descendant from royalty. Uh, not the same royalty that can use the uh, Founding Titan or anything, but royalty nonetheless, which was interesting. Um, and that basically they came to give the details of Zeke's plan, which I'm sure he told them because we actually saw the ruler of that country. I don't know if it's the ruler of that country or just the person speaking for that country that came to Marley when Tiber was having all of those countries come to Marley so that he could discuss going to war against Paradis with them. I'm sure that's when Zeke told her of the plan because we saw her in those previous episodes. But anyways, she comes to tell them of Zeke's plan and Zeke's plan is to pass the Beast Titan down to someone of royal blood and the fa pass the Founding Titan down soon and so then they can use the powers together, as I said, and continuously breed forever so that they can keep those Titans with them for eternity and Aaron is pissed about that because he doesn't want to be seen as livestock anymore because he said it before in earlier seasons that being in those walls was pretty much being like livestock for the titans food for the titans and he doesn't want that life anymore he doesn't want to be controlled he doesn't want to be bred like livestock he doesn't want to be treated like an animal and like nothing and also, Historia is the one who volunteers to be the Beast Titan because she is royalty, and he obviously doesn't want that for her. He's been trying to protect her for years. So he's pissed, he storms off, and him, and he gets punished and has to build a railroad, and we get this hilarious scene of Levi showing up and talking about how everyone's growing up so big and he's still so short and he looks so adorable next to all of them. <laughs> so we get that whole shtick. And... I'm going to guess that Aaron being so angry about all that is one of the reasons why he decides to become a hostage within Marley because we know from little things that they've said that um, 
Aaron pretending to be a wounded soldier, going underground and talking to Reiner and just bursting from the stage like that wasn't exactly the plan that the Paradise Island crew had in mind. And they were really fucking pissed at him, which is why he's cur current, Aaron is currently in a jail cell. And I really think that that probably has a big part of it. Though, it seems like um, current Aaron is going along with Zeke and Zeke's plan. So I'm wondering what changed his tune between then and now. I'm gonna guess that Zeke became persuasive, but it's not like the Paradise Island crew really wants to be bred like cattle either, and they don't want Historia to be hurt either, but they obviously want to go about it in a different way than Aaron does, because Aaron is a whiny whiny revenge-only baby. But anyways, Aaron is in a jail cell and grabs Hanji and threatens them and... I was really upset by that. Like, Aaron is unhinged. I am not a fan of Aaron anymore. And people are starting to become very wary of him. And I just really want to know why it seemed two years ago that Aaron didn't want to go along with Zeke's plan. And now, based on what Armin and Mikasa are saying, it seems like he's on Zeke's side now. So what changed? I don't know. I want to know. Maybe Zeke reminded him that this is the only way for him to get his revenge. And I have a feeling that Zeke and Aaron want to use his plan in a much more destructive way than the Paradise Island crew wants. I just have that feeling. I've not read the manga, but anyways. And then, shocker, we find out that Historia is pregnant. And so she can't currently become the Beast Titan right now because she's pregnant. And she says that she's pregnant with the baby of someone from her hometown but I don't buy it I think it's Aaron's baby but I've not read the manga please don't say anything that's just my theory just because it seems like it could go along with Zeke and Aaron's plan but please don't tell me if I'm right or wrong in the comments because I have not read the manga so I do not know this is just my theory but I know that we saw the face of the guy who's supposedly the dad but Historia could easily be lying to them, and I could really see the reveal of it being Aaron's kid to be very highly likely based on the way that Aaron and Zeke are currently thinking. But that's all I have to say. That was a, a pretty long review this time, but I had a lot to say about it. It's been a really interesting couple of episodes learning so much about what they've been growing through. And that's it, and I will see you on Saturday for my ReZero video. Bye!